Now, this is my first time guest hosting Free Speech Nation. I thought I might use the opportunity to sound a note of optimism for that principle for free speech, the lifeblood of a healthy democracy, the, the right on which all others depend, and the sine qua non of mental health, in my view, at both the individual and national level. One of the most tantalizing prospects offered for connoisseurs of open debate is the candidature, candidature for 2024 for the Democratic presidential nomination of one Robert F. F. Kennedy Jr. Any fit, young and healthy candidate would surely be a welcome innovation in American politics at the moment, let alone one carrying the most famous brand of youthful vigor and optimism in American political history. Both the default candidates, meanwhile, are campaigning to enjoy second terms they would end well into their 80s. Kennedy, at 69, is not only nominally younger, but evidently more vital than either Biden or Trump have been for years. Strategically released footage of him bare-chested and bench-pressing a moderate weight has emphasized that he is in very good shape, even for a middle-aged man. Some have suggested he may be benefiting from the sort of testosterone replacement therapy that is reshaping many older, wealthier men now. Jeff Bezos, for instance, much as Viagra did in a more targeted way only a generation ago. But more seriously and more intriguing for the discourse are a wide range of policy issues on which Kennedy has a long record of holding heretical views by any mainstream liberal standards, let alone those of a Democrat. He is most commonly described as an anti-vaxxer, but as is so often the case, this does little justice to the fully evolved, coherent and interconnected views he holds, most of which long preceded the advent of COVID-19, and most of which which gather around a general suspicion that the uh, USA's Food and Drug Administration is dominated by the vastly powerful business interests usually referred to as Big Pharma. Wikipedia asserts that Kennedy's rhetoric often utilizes conspiracy theories, then gives as an example his contention that COVID pandemic served to benefit billionaires. According to Kennedy, they go on, the pandemic resulted in a $4.4 trillion shift in wealth from the American middle class to this new oligarchy that we created. 500 new billionaires with the lockdowns and the billionaires that we already had increased their wealth by 30%. Well, whether or not he's right to invite us to draw sinister conclusions about the wisdom or necessity of lockdown from those figures, they are certainly broadly correct. And it is encouraging to see a senior political figure draw attention to them. Nor is Kennedy simply someone throwing up lots of talking points to see which ones stick. He has decades decades-long history of largely successful legal action on behalf of various underdogs, whether they be the victims of industrial pollution, cruel and counterproductive factory farming methods, or indigenous rights. He's put his money, his prestige, and his capacity for hard work and close reading where his mouth is again and again. And perhaps most intriguingly, he holds some decidedly non-mainstream views about the forces behind the assassinations, both of his famous father and his even more famous uncle. Americans have famously enshrined the right to free speech in their First Amendment, but the reality is that until very recently, hearing that speech amplified was the privilege of a tiny minority. Only a decade ago, such troublesome opinions and inconvenient facts as Kennedy voices would likely have seen him sidelined, denied the newsprint and airtime of publicity and unable to cast the seeds of doubt in the minds of voters, let alone mount a serious challenge to an incumbent president. Only two years ago, it was touch and go whether they could even maintain a Twitter account. Now, however, with platforms like Joe Rogan and Tucker Carlson regularly attracting millions more than the networks to long conversations in which thoughtful individuals are allowed to express themselves and even correct themselves in real time without needless interruption and curtailment, there is a chance that things might finally be changing and a bit of genuine diversity of opinion may well get aired in 2024. And that, in my view, can surely only be a good thing.